Hi there. This video is going to talk about growth factors and growth factor receptors, which is covered in Chapter 5. So, as we talked about before, um, cells, in order to undergo mitosis, typically require uh, a signal, um, something that tells them, now is the time to grow, we need more of you. These signals um, can come from the external environment. And so, uh, what are we talking about in terms of externally? Well, it's usually another cell telling this cell, we need more of you. So in this instance, the green cell is communicating to the black cell and saying, you know what, we need more of you. So it's now it's the proper time to grow. So we're going to talk about how normal cells know when it's time to grow, and that will allow us to discuss how cancer cells um, grow abnormally. So um, these factors that are released by one cell and can tell another cell to grow are in fact called growth factors, and they're typically proteins, and we're going to learn about a number of them in this course. So um, growth factors were discovered uh, a number of different ways, and so I'll give you one example um, about the where growth factors are typically found and, and how scientists exploit them. So here are some cells growing in a dish, and there these cells are in the fluid, um, and that fluid, or known as a medium, um, contains things that cells need to grow. Glucose, amino acids, vitamins. It turns out if you try to grow cells in a lab, um, they'll, um, they like all the stuff. The glucose and the amino acids helps keep them alive, but it doesn't... Um, give them any signals that they should uh, divide, that they should undergo um, mitosis. So scientists, um, f when growing cells in the lab, need something that tells cells you can grow. And that substance, typically in a lab, is known as FBS, or fetal bovine serum. And that's exactly what it sounds like. The S for serum, you know what serum is. Serum is the liquid part of blood. It comes from the plasma. Um, in this instance, scientists use bovine serum, um, so this is a cow serum, and um, from the actually fetal uh, cows. So um, scientists use this in the laboratory all the time. If you're growing cells in a dish, you need a substance in there that is telling the cells that they have permission to grow. And fetal bovine serum, so that is actually part of the blood of a fetal cow um, actually contains a very large number of growth factors, and not surprising because cows have to grow. Um, actually, all organisms grow in the fetus, and all of them are secreting growth factors. So, in the laboratory, scientists use fetal bovine serum as a source of growth factors, and when you apply fetal bovine serum to cells, they will actually undergo mitosis. So, it was known that um, something in serum, especially take serum taken from a developing animal, um, contains some substance that tells the cells it's time to grow. And those substances were named growth factors. And they're also termed mitogens because they're causing cells uh, to undergo mitosis and divide. So that was one of the um, ways by which uh, growth factors were discovered. Some substance um, telling cells to undergo mitosis. Um, let's talk about another example, uh, a specific example of a growth factor and where it's found and how it works. So we're actually now going to start to learn uh, real growth factors and where they come from and how they work normally in the body. So what I've drawn on the left, um, that's uh, some skin. Right? It doesn't look like it. So that's uh, skin and oop, now there's a wound. Right? So there's a cut, there's some tissue damage, and uh, tissue's got to be repaired, right? So what cells are involved in tissue repair? Uh, platelets. And so hopefully you've learned somewhere about platelets. Um, there are these cell fragments that circulate in our bloodstream, and platelets become activated when they encounter um, a wound, and they actually bind to um, cells that are exposed uh, in the wound, uh, connective tissue. Actually, they activate them the platelets bind the connective tissue, platelets activate, and they begin the clotting process and the repair process. So how do platelets work to repair this tissue site? Well, if you look inside platelets, and there's a figure in your book that shows 
um, what a platelet looks like, there are all these um, vesicles that are packed with substances that become released when platelets are activated. So when a platelet, you know, platelet's going around your body right now, it's not activated unless it encounters um, damaged uh, blood vessel, at which point the platelets activate when it binds the connective tissue. And what happens uh, is those uh, secretory vesicles release their cargo, and that cargo is involved in wound repair and wound healing. So one of the in things that happens during wound repair are um, the uh, mitosis, uh, is the mitosis of fibroblasts. So fibroblasts, hopefully you remember, are connective tissue cells. They make the um, connective tissue that usually underlies uh, epithelial tissue. And so during wound repair, um, typically if the site is damaged, you require more fibroblasts um, in order to replace the ones that were damaged during the wound. So um, in a wound, you have the growth of new cells. And so here you go, fibroblasts are multiplying. Um, how did the fibroblast know it was time to undergo um, mitosis, uh, that we needed more fibroblasts? Well, the platelets released something that told the fibroblast to grow. Um, and this is what scientists have discovered, one of the first growth factors discovered, um, is the substance that is released by platelets and gets cells to grow. And so they named the substance platelet-derived growth factor, or PDGF. So this is a protein made by platelets. And when this protein is released from platelets and uh, encounters fibroblasts, they undergo the cell cycle. So this is a normal um, mechanism that happens in the body during wound repair, and you can see it's a mechanism of cell-to-cell -cell communication. A platelet has communicated a signal to fibroblasts and tells them now it's time to grow. And that's a good, normal thing. Um, how do um, growth factors work? So we know that they're made by one cell, and they're going to be released and target another cell. But how exactly does a growth factor work? For example, the platelet-derived growth factor. So it's going to be released, um, and it's going to encounter the fibroblast, and there's the fibroblast that's just sitting there in G1, um, and it's going to encounter the signal. Well, how do it, where does the growth factor go to get a cell to divide? Um, it's the, it's, right now, the, the growth factor is outside the cell. It's in the extracellular fluid, the, in the interstitial uh, space. Does that growth factor go into the cell? It does not, right? But the signal needs to go into the cell because the DNA is in the nucleus, the genes that control um, S phase progression, they're all in the nucleus. How does a signal get from the uh, extracellular space into the nucleus? Well, we're going to have to introduce a new class of um, proteins on the surface of the cell called receptors. So these are proteins found embedded in the plasma membrane of cells uh, known as growth factor receptors. So in this instance, the PDGF protein released by platelets binds to um, the PDGF receptor found on the surface of fibroblast cells. And what does this binding do? Well, it sends a signal into the nucleus to say, hey, you know what, fibroblast, you need to grow. We need more of you. We've got, we had a wound. Uh, we had some damage, we need more fibroblasts. So a signal is sent from the plasma membrane, which is where the PDGF receptor is found, into the nucleus. And that is known as signal transduction, and we'll get into the, um, all the details of signal transduction in the next chapter. So that's a brief introduction to PDGF receptors uh, and growth factor receptors in general. The next video will talk about some growth, other types of growth factors uh, specifically.